Hello. Today I thought I'd get out my granulating watercolours and have a go at a rock painting. This is my colour chart that has my most granulating watercolours in it. I made a video on this a little while back, which I'll link to down below. I've got out my palettes which have water uh, granulating watercolours in them. And it's just a really nice exercise to do. It's enjoyable watching the colours flow into each other. And I thought you might like to see a close-up of that. So first of all, I'm just taking a look at my colour chart and working out a very rough colour palette that I'm going to stick to today. I'm thinking I might do something with the, the browns, greys, blacks and maybe a few of the darker purples in it. I don't really work out in advance what the pattern is that I like. First and foremost, this is just playtime, and so my emphasis is just on drawing the paints in their own right. Actually, let's see if I can bring this lower. It's a very dull day here today, so I'm hoping the lighting will be good enough. So I'm starting off with Hematite Genuine from Daniel Smith. And I'm just painting, I don't want a too regular shape, um, it's a more organic look. I try and keep the edges quite smooth. I'm only using pulp watercolour paper here, it's Canton XL. Um, I'm not worried about areas drying out before the others. I try and keep my paint quite wet though. So before this one's dry, I'm going to start my next rock and just touch the very edge of it. And you can see how it flows together. When I first started doing these, I used to worry when the paint colour was really pale. But I don't mind that so much now. This last colour was Roman Schmaltz Van Dyke Brown. It's interesting to see which the pushier paints are. So both of these are pushed in on the Van Dyke brown. This one I'm doing now is um, Schmincke's Super Granulating uh, Tundra Pink. Okay. Next I'm painting with um, a colour I've not used in these before. I think it's going to be nice. It's A Gallows Noturno. It's a mixture of pigments. Um, PB29, PR101 and PB19. So if you can hear grumbling in the background it's my border collie who've just got in from a walk and he's just shifting around making himself comfortable this is one of my favorite new super gran well, granulating watercolors i should say and this is aquarius black from roman schmoll Okay then, so I've done one row here now and my next step is just to work my way down and if I can connect, start connecting pebbles with each other. I've got no exact signs for this 
It's just plonking them wherever you feel like, really. And this is moon glow. I'm not particularly worrying about um, light fastness. I think most of these have got good light fastness, though. Um, with the only ones I've heard questioning about is the moon glow here and the Van Dyke brown that I used second. one of my favourites. Daniel Smith's Hematite's Violet Genuine. And it doesn't look very much at first, but I just love the way it separates out. And I'm just using um, Silver Black Velvet Number no. 8 paintbrush. So all I'm doing really is paint a bit, look at it from a, with, from a bit of distance. Let's show you from a different angle now. Look at it from a bit of distance and then figure out what colour, what colour I might balance things out a little bit. That brown I just did was the Schmincke's Galaxy Brown, which has a beautiful kind of violet granulation to it. I tend to use paints more than once. in a single painting. So I've realised since I started doing YouTube that I'm not very good at talking and painting at the same time. This one is Roman Schmoll's Misty Morning. And the problem comes a bit when the first ones, you've, the earlier ones that you've done, start to dry out. So I sometimes help them along a bit just by adding a bit of water on the border. And I know it's going to leave a bit of a watermark in the next colour along, but it's nice to have that little bit of flow between them still.
looking because as long as you get the outside edge really clean it doesn't particularly it doesn't particularly matter what's going on inside the pebbles as much in my opinion that is The other thing you can do is um, vary the strength of pigment that you lay down for an individual colour. So this is Van Dyke Brown again that I'm doing. And I had my Van Dyke Brown here, but this time I'm going to put a lot less paint down. So it doesn't look like an identical colour. This is a Gallard Nocturna again. Schminky's Haze Black. This is have a type violet genuine, but I'm not. I'm not sure that the last lot I squeezed out into my palette. I'm wondering if it had quite a bit of binder in it. it wasn't mixed very well because looking at it here, it's got a lot less pigment in it than usual. Problem with not having a plan is wondering how it's going to fit together at the end. I think I'll leave a little hole in that one just for some interest.
So these ones that have dried a little bit, that I painted earlier on, uh, you can see that I'm having to help along a little bit. Oh, and this last colour that I did was Roman Schmoll's Shadow Violet. Do one last little pebble here. And this is Roman Schmoll's Misty Morning. Right, so I'll let that dry and then take a look in a bit. The rocks have just about dried now, so I'll show you them close up. And then I'm going to decorate them with acrylic pens and just turn them into painted pebbles. I just don't think you can beat the texture of granulating paints. It's just so much fun. I feel like making the pebbles quite playful picked out three Karen pigment deco brush markers um, these are acrylic ink with a brush nib like that I'm also going to be using the white Posca PC 1MR
I'm certainly not claiming it's any great work of art, but it's definitely a lot of fun and a nice way to enjoy granulating watercolours. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye. And bye from Freddy, my fluffy border collie who, <laughs> who faithfully joins me for every video I make.